So many of you know, when talking about bladder cancer, that the management of bladder cancer that hasn't gone into the muscle, the fundamental management is to remove the tumor and then put BCG in the bladder. But there have been a lot of issues with BCG. There's been shortages. These issues of shortages have been going on for since 2020, now another article in 2024. And BCG is sometimes hard to access. Is there another option? Actually, there is, and there's a really good option. So today we're going to talk about the alternative to BCG, and it might even be better. So let's jump into it. So here we have a paper, this is what we're going to discuss today, and it's a comparison of using BCG, which is basically cow tuberculosis that we put in people's bladders to cause an immune reaction, to try to get your immune system to kill cancer that may be remnant in the bladder, versus putting chemotherapy in the bladder. And there have been a lot of different tests of using different chemotherapies in the bladder, but the current kind of king of the hill is this combination of two, two chemotherapies called gemcitabine and docetaxel. And so this paper is uh, a comparison of gemcitabine and docetaxel put in the bladder versus BCG and seeing basically how this works. And so um, the structure of the study is that patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer and high risk bladder cancer, so a basically high grade bladder cancer that didn't grow into the muscle, these people had uh, either six treatments with BCG once a week or six treatments with gemcitabine followed by docetaxel on the same day. And then they checked to see if there's any cancer there. If there was no cancer left, then they would go on to a maintenance schedule. And BCG maintenance is a little confusing. It's uh, three weekly treatments done at month three, six, then 12, 18, 24, 36. So basically you start at once every three months and then the treatments are every six months until you get to three years versus the chemotherapy administration maintenance schedule, which is once a month. And so let's let's look at what they found. So looking at the data, we see that most of these patients were in their 70s. We see that the predominantly the patients enrolled were male, about uh, three-fourths of patients being male. That's pretty consistent with most bladder cancer studies as bladder cancer is more common among men than women. About a third were never smokers, so suggesting something else was their cause of their bladder cancer. And we see that the patients included all kinds of high-grade patients, those with CIS, high-grade T1, TA, basically how invasive the cancer was. It was quite varied. And so you really want to know what happened, like how these people do. So let's look at the data. So here we're looking at patients who either went underwent BCG or gemcitabine docetaxel installation in the bladder. And we followed them from month zero to month 36. And this graph is showing the rate of high-grade recurrence-free survival. Sounds confusing, it's not. They're basically saying, what are the odds that someone had no high-grade recurrences? So they're allowing for people to have a low-grade cancer recurrence because they're usually not that dangerous. But what are the odds that someone lived these years without a high-grade recurrence? And what you look at, first this line in black, this is the BCG line. What we see in the first three months is that for most of the BCG failures occur in the first three months, and then about another approximately 10% of the BCG failures occur after those three months. And we see that the recurrence Free survival rates are pretty good. Around 70% of patients would make it to three years without a recurrence of high-grade cancer. Awesome. Now, how did gemcitabine docetaxel do? Well, it did better. First of all, we don't see this drop-off in three months of people who respond versus don't respond. Rather, it was a more gradual line. But what we're seeing is that three years, these people who had the gemcitabine docetaxel group actually had lower rates of recurrence. This is kind of paradigm shifting because we had always thought BCG is the first line treatment, BCG is the first line treatment for people with uh, high grade non muscle invasive bladder cancer. And now we're starting to see that this is, um, you know, a little bit being contested. The data may be better with gemcitabine docetaxel. So here we look at the statistics and see if any of those variables we talked, out and talked about in the beginning was sort of predictive of someone having a recurrence. And they actually found some things. So if there was carcinoma in situ present in the tumor, then their risk of recurrence was higher. So it was about two times higher, 1.8 times higher. So that's something to be aware of. The people with carcinoma in situ have higher recurrence risk. And if they were treated with gemcitabine and docetaxel, their odds of recurrence were 57% that of the average population or the, the BCG population. That's a pretty substantial reduction. So if you could say um, essentially that you have a 43% reduction in your risk of recurrence, by doing gemcitabine docetaxel versus BCG. Now, you look at the data and you see the curves are actually, they're a little different. So it's that 47% sounds huge. And that's why, you know, medical statistics can be um, a little confusing, but uh, it's a still a pretty dramatic improvement. And here they're saying that their statistical significance met their threshold of a 5% random chance 
uh, explaining this. They're saying this was below that 5% threshold. So that's a pretty, pretty good finding. So now you're saying, okay, why doesn't everyone do this? Uh, sounds better. And aren't the side effects going to be worse? I mean, this is chemo. Well, it turns out not so much. Since the chemo doesn't get, doesn't get absorbed into the circulation in very high quantities, and we have other studies that show that, people tend to have mostly local uh, reactions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the adverse effects profile of uh, gemcitabine versus BCG. And I, I already went ahead and did the courtesy of highlighting those that were statistically significant. This is where they make a comparison between the people at BCG and the people who had gemcitabine docetaxel and said there was a difference in the risk of side effects uh, and those risks, those differences were real. And so we'll look at only the real ones. And so here they see the intolerance of the induction therapy, meaning the medication was too hard to hold. Uh, that was seen in around 9% of the BCG group and about 3% of the gemcitabine docetaxel group. So actually, this would argue that gemcitabine docetaxel may be a little bit easier to tolerate. The rates of bladder spasms are around 5% in the BCG group and 21% in the gemcitabine docetaxel group. So bladder spasms are far more common in those who have chemotherapy inside the bladder. And then finally, dysuria, which means burning when you pee, was seen in around 13% of patients with the BCG treatment and around 5% of the patients with the chemotherapy treatment. So pretty, pretty nice distinction. The last thing that is significant here is the rates of arthralgia or joint pain. So there was around 4% of people who did get joint pain from the BCG. This was not seen at all in the chemotherapy group. So you're starting to see that, you know, while chemotherapy sounds like a much scarier thing, uh, since there's no systemic absorption, the side effect profiles are actually pretty similar between the two, maybe a little bit more tolerable. And you can see that the rates of people who fell off of treatment in, B, in the BCG group were actually higher than those who fell off of treatment in the gemcitabine and docetaxel group, suggesting that it's actually more tolerable. But let me, let's go to the authors and see what they say. So here we're seeing that the authors themselves write that patients who had the gemcitabine and docetaxel treatment had a lower risk of recurrence and a lower risk of high-grade recurrence compared to patients treated with the BCG. In terms of toxic side effects, the gemcitabine docetaxel was well tolerated. With patients receiving gemcitabine and docetaxel, were less likely to discontinue treatment of induction therapy due to adverse effects. So it seems we might have a bit of a paradigm shift here. Okay, so, so you should be looking at this and be like, holy cow, doc, you just showed me data that shows that uh, there's something maybe better than BCG. And the data actually is saying it is better than BCG. It's tolerated better. And... It's not in a shortage. Why isn't everyone doing this? Okay, there's several reasons. So let's talk about that. First, this is the single study that's shown this, right? So in medicine, people are hesitant to, be get, to believe single institution studies. It does come from a reputable group in, um, at University of Iowa, and we generally do uh, respect uh, uh, literature from these larger and more um, well-trusted institutions. But people want to see this replicated. They want to see another data set that supports it. That's reason number one. Reason number two, it's new. Look at the publication date on this paper, 2023. So it hasn't been long and it takes time for people to adopt new technologies and uh, modify their practices, take this in. I can say that uh, in our practice, we've been doing uh, installations of gemcitabine and docetaxel for about four years, uh, which is ahead of the curve, but not by any means, uh, you know, something we've been doing for decades. And as we adopted this, some of the providers in our group also had to learn how to, how to manage the problems associated with it, how to administer it, et cetera. So um, my whole point here is to try to convey to you guys, if you're in an institution that has no BCG access, or there's a BCG shortage where you live, or you don't have access to BCG, there is an absolutely excellent substitute, which is the gemcitabine and docetaxel. And uh, if you're doctors there are not comfortable with doing these installations, you can look for someone that does them. And I'm sure that it, in most major cities, there will be one institution who's doing these gemcitabine and docetaxel installations. Um, on our next video, we'll actually talk about if you had BCG first and it fails, do you have to go straight to surgery or can you now try the gemcitabine and docetaxel or chemotherapy bladder, or chemotherapy washing in the bladder? And uh, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. The data is pretty impressive. So we'll go over that too. Plus, there will be a lot of videos coming out about bladder cancer because there is a huge number of new technologies that are reaching the market soon <coughs> that are actually really, really good. 
And I'm quite excited to share these uh, with, with you guys so that you can get the best treatment possible. So if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and write comments. That's how YouTube figures out if people like this channel or not, and they distribute it to other people. We're trying to get good information out because there's so much garbage on the internet. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. I'll see you for the next one.